Hey everybody! Welcome back to another land place. Slay the Spire. We lost on the last one, but we... I think we gave it the old college try. And we're playing with the defect here. I still feel like I don't really know what I'm doing with the defect, but sometimes we re-roll this relic and we get something incredible and then we just win. The only other option... I mean, here's the thing. I really like upgrading a zap early. But I think you go for friggin' broke. Oh lord, you no longer discard your hand after your turn. I don't... So this is a buffed version of Runic Pyramid. I still have no idea if I even like it at all. We do get to keep a card like Dual Cast, which is very helpful, admittedly. And actually directly contributed to both of them dying. I don't know how much we can read into that, but it does seem pretty useful and we'll start with a hologram I'm not too confident about our start here let's leave it at that I guess it does allow us to have a turn like that where we we don't squander I'm gonna hold this dual cast just for a bit because we can where we don't have to squander the fact that we drew a disproportionate amount of defense early and it, it, you don't love this turn to be honest with you we have to draw dual cast next turn right now Okay, so I'm starting to perhaps understand at least ever so slightly. We end up, especially if we keep a thin deck, we can pretty much guarantee what we're going to draw. But how much is that worth? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, I guess it's, it's kind of like a weird bag of prep that probably is better than I respect it for right now. Um, but I think, I, because my confidence is a little low, ah, never mind. What I was going to say is we're going to take this path, but I definitely do not see myself fighting two elites and living without any kind of, uh, defense. Still going to take one here, but what are you supposed to do? I think that's our best turn. Um, well, we're certainly going to draw a zap next turn. I'll tell you that much. Without a friggin' doubt. Okay, taking one damage. Obviously pr would prefer to not, but... Still, I don't know. I guess... I sort of look at this run right now, and I say, you know what? Like, if we can get... A self-repair, which I normally consider mission critical anyway. Um, maybe, just maybe, there's a path for us. Let me run the numbers here real quick. Um, 16 plus 12 is enough to kill you. That's how quick you can run the numbers there. No problem. If we can get a self-repair, i.e. some sustain, I think I'm a happy man. Let's be honest, we don't need three holograms. That's a little... <laughs> <laughs> we especially do not need three unupgraded holograms, but I digress. Why not? All right. So we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I, that's kind of one of the things I've been liking about Ascension Mode is that it's a good opportunity for you to figure out where you stand, you know? I'm playing the tape forward here. If we draw... Let's strength potion means we're doing eight with sweeping beam. So we would take six damage off the field. We would hologram, sweeping beam, defend, take two damage. I kinda like that turn. And then next turn, two strikes and a zap kills you. Or alternatively, zap dual cast. Not bad. With such a thin deck, so far, it does seem like like Claws plus Holograms is a good opportunity for you. And, uh, oh, for me, really. I think... I'm gonna be a little risky. I'm gonna remove a card from the deck. We're gonna take a basic Defend, just because we have so many Holograms. I think it's... Normally, you know this, like, ten times out of ten, I would take a Strike being removed there, but... He definitely would upgrade a hologram before a claw, but hopefully we'll have a chance to make good on that. Um, what do we like here? That's fine. Now, we pretty much have to start on this turn. So I'm like, claw, 
hologram claw. Start working that bad boy around. Draw a card to get to your next claw faster. No need to dual cast yet, I think. I do expect to be hit pretty hard. So we get another claw. That's what we're trying to cycle around as quickly as possible there. Um, I mean, Hologram Claw, it starts to do quite a good amount of damage here. And you know, if you'll hear me out here, I kind of like defend, defend. Whoops, get out of your malware bites. We take three damage, guess what's coming back? As you darn right, it's a friggin' Claw. So we're gonna Claw. I think you defend, defend. I guess, I, to be honest, I just put another zap out there. That way I can dual cast next turn. And you know we got a claw coming around. This is like some he's beginning to believe sort of stuff that's happening to me right now. Like, I just worry we, our hand might be too full to get the claw. We got lucky. Like, that was a really, really good fight. Unceasing top, I have no friggin' idea. <laughs> Rebound seems necessary for our claw archetype here, but I don't think we're ever going to be able to use Unceasing Top in this deck, but... Zap. Hologram. Zap. Def oh, that's right. Anyway, we take 7 damage, but we get 2 Lightning out there, which I think is pretty important. Alright, we get a Claw. So you Rebound. Claw. There you go. What comes next? Like, generally speaking, you'd probably prefer not to... Not to do what we did right here. This is my bad. I thought I would get a claw, but obviously it's in our draw pile instead of our discard, so... You know? Sweeping Beam. Should have been the, the original play. Then you get claw. Uh, we are going to take a lot of damage here. Well, I mean, if this is all the damage we take, which admittedly is a little... Hopeful, let's say. It's not that bad. You know, we take another 5 damage. We'll be roughly at full HP to go into the boss fight. We what, All we want to do now... And I believe this wholeheartedly. All we want to do right now is be very careful... About the cards that we add to this deck. Well, I mean... We'd like to draw a defend if possible. Instead, obviously, we're going to draw a claw and then kill you. And oh my god, this deck is good. We want to be careful with what we add. Like here, I don't really see a need. Uh, because our thin deck works to our advantage in a huge way right now. Like even, an, I, I kind of feel like another hologram totally works. And you know what? Give me that meal ticket. Why do I take meal ticket? Because I got no other option for heals whatsoever right now. So we have a 16 card deck with a couple of exhaustibles. I do like that. Uh, this is a, a good opportunity for thorns. No question. Don't even play... I mean, I guess you... I, don't even play rebound. Use rebound to get claw ramped up faster. That's your play. In this case, I actually... Go ahead and hit me for 36. We're gonna rebound a zap. Play a defend. Hit me for 31, sorry. So that's obviously terrible. Like, I would have certainly prefer that never happens again, if possible. But I still think we've got things starting to work out for us a little bit here. Now, you obviously, whenever possible, want to play Claw, which is what we're going to do here. So we're getting to the point where this guy doesn't fill our deck with any trash. So, pretty much, we're going to be drawing Claw almost every time here. Um... At this point, with a deck this thin, I really do think you kind of just go like... Like Zap, Hologram, Hologram. What's the point? Well, the point was not getting hit for 100 damage, if possible. Where's my defense, though? There they are. Um, Rebound, Claw, Defend, Sweeping Beam. Why Sweeping Beam? Let's get another Claw back. And then we're taking fifth. Oh, no, we're not. He Once we get him in the point where we can just hit him. 
And like you would expect the claw to do enough damage to to cycle him. That's where you're happy with where you're at. Although, I mean, again, sixteen. I think you just have to do this. So we're gonna take eleven damage. This is where we want to absolutely destroy him. So it'd be like a rebound, claw, sweeping beam, claw. We need to hit him for eight. We're gonna get there. <laughs> uh, wow. Um, easy, really, is what I meant to say. All right, not a not a hard fight at all, uh, except for the fact that we were. You know, about a microsecond away from death. I do think a buffer, for survival's sake, seems pretty important. And you know what? Give me that dang old Sozu. I think I'm ready to give this one a try. This is an interesting run. It really does rely on Claw. Let's see if we can make good. Probably don't need me to tell you this. This is a terrible buffer, though. We're still going to take three damage, but what can you do? These enemies actually melt pretty nicely to uh, poison, so we'll use our last opportunity there. We don't have draw, so here's what I think you do. Claw, hologram, bring back claw, rebound. That was not the enemy I was supposed to hit. Claw. Now you got nine damage on the field. We are going to take one. Right now we're taking... Yeah, okay, I think you do it like that. Just because the poison's going to destroy you as well. This is not that bad. Okay, and now you have... It's the same situation over and over. You got Claw. Goes in here. What do you do next? Hologram. You can bring back Sweeping Beam in this situation, actually, and it's two kills. So that's where... It's actually three kills, really. That went Okay. We get two chances to add cards. Don't really like that. I do think there's something about a reinforced body, just to give us potentially enough block. This guy is a real pain in the butt. Uh, well, zap, dual cast. Honestly, I think you hologram zap. Get it back out there. It's the best you can do in this situation. No claw. I think you... <sighs> Buffer is always going to be worth 11, but still... You know, if we can get enough block on this turn and hold buffer for later, I think I'm a happy man. This time you have to play it. It's a pretty bad turn. We shouldn't, there's no reason to even play the first defend. We should have played like a sweeping beam or something instead. Um, so we just need to save two energy. That's not bad. So we should be getting Sweeping Beam on the next turn. Yeah, I like it because if we get a rebound, a Sweeping Beam, and Claw, we rebound Claw, Sweeping Beam, and get Claw back. So what do you think here? 27 damage? That's helpful. If we dual cast at 16, you'll be at 5. Easy enough. I think we do need self-repair. There is a temptation to FTL as well. I think another rebound totally works. But I do, you know, I worry about where we're at on the run, I guess. Buffer is still, it's better than hologram, but we do want those holograms upgraded. No question. Another thing that we want, and, you know, I don't want to necessarily be perceived as being too bitter about it, but, you know, if there's any chance we could draw Claw on turn one, we've had it in our deck for about 300 years. Again, not trying to be like, you know, a jerk or anything like that, but I was just wondering if you might like find it in your heart to give me the card that is essentially my win condition in the first couple of turns instead of automatically sorting it to the bottom of the deck for reasons unbeknownst. 12 damage, huh? So if we save, we still need to save two. That's fine. Just do it like this. 
Buffer is still pretty important. So I'm going to Claw. Hologram. Claw. Hologram. Claw. Play a buffer so we don't take any damage. He's still doing 18. That's like an awful lot. So we're going to block as much as we can. And we're going to hologram a claw. We're still taking five, but, you know, we're doing our best. On this turn, if we play it for two energy, we're still set. So we're taking no damage, just very, very slowly working them down here. Um, 25. I think we literally have him, but it's close. There we go. 35. What do we like? Scrape cycles through the deck fast enough that I think I'm okay with it. And, I mean, to be honest, I kind of like the concept of chill here. Get it out of our deck, but it's helpful to begin with. So, I think we're going to start with an upgraded hologram. We, Dude, we would love to see a madness in this deck. Like, madness hits hologram, hits claw. You know, we can get some really, really valuable stuff out of that. Like, right off the bat, rebound. Hologram comes back. We get rebound as well. Um, I don't think we really care about a buffer, honestly. I, except... No, we don't here. It's a weird play. But there's no reason to play... You know, we because of the buffer, we would lose the effectiveness of the first one. Because the first one would only like block for two, more or less. It's exactly what we want. So we won't rebound Hologram Claw. We will Claw, Hologram, Claw. Which we, the rebound would have been the next logical play there, admittedly. Um... And again, we're just trying to... I want to use the buffers to block big hits instead of blocking for like 7. And this is a big hit for sure, but we can also... For 3 energy, we can take 0 damage. Doesn't really do a lot to help us get ahead of this guy, but it's a start. Um, so you definitely hologram claw. Rebound claw. Still got 2 energy left. It's very tempting to just do defend, defend. Even though we take a lot of damage in the process. Well, 13. It's not really that bad, actually. Um, now you look at this turn maybe as a buffer opportunity. But the claw is getting out there. And again, for 3 energy, I take no damage. We got so many wounds coming, though. But if we're taking 0... Kind of like it. So we can scrape. Hopefully, I was just going to say, get rid of some of these wounds. <gasps> so we're basically dead. Um, no, we're literally dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll start over here. We, we gave that one a try. I thought we had something going, but that boss, he got us pretty good. Let's try this again. See if we get some more tenable options here. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. You can no longer see enemy intents. Well. <laughs> you know, I respect the opportunity to use my memory. Seven damage. Yeah. This... You know, in all likelihood, is going to lead to some pretty inefficient turns. But we do get extra energy out of it. Oh, we got him. So I think you could build something with this run, but you gotta you gotta pay very close attention, and that's a little dangerous for me. None of those seem like uh, ten out of ten pickups, but you know, I admittedly could just be incorrect. Man, I really wanted one of those to hit you. So we're going to take a little here, I think, usually. No, just endless stat downgrades. Figured we might as well go for this guy. He's basically just as close. No longer weak. 
Definitely shouldn't have played that second defend and should have just hit him, but somehow, mercifully, we're not being held accountable for that. Hmm. Let's start with some cold snaps. You know, I think the idea is that those extra blocks could help us out quite a lot. The, even if it's just passive. So this guy, you know what you want to do on this guy. You want to hit him as hard as possible, as soon as possible. Barring that, which is basically where we're at here, at least we got four block by default. We don't really need to play both defense here, but... So he's doing 10 damage this turn, so we can get away with that. We just have to kill him on this turn. And that's definitely doable. So far, so good. I think I would take Leap in most situations there. Alright, so we're going to start with maybe an upgrade. Um, I really, again, I always like a cheap Zap. I always like a cheap dual cast. Without having added anything truly amazing to the deck, this is definitely where we're going to start here. It's one of the very few times that like having four energy with the default defect deck is probably okay is when you fight these guys. Because you look at it and you go, okay, it's not that bad. It makes your turns very easy as well. I think you have to try just to see what you can get out of it. You know, when you have five cards, you just basically choose what's the worst one of the five and then you don't play that. Easy enough. So this almost gives us enough block, but given the situation, we might as well put down more than enough. In fact, it does give us enough block because of the Frost Orb, but... Now we're in a War of Attrition. It basically depends on what we draw, um, which might seem overly reductive, and I would admit that that's probably the case. But, you know, as long as we draw, like, a couple of defends on every turn... We will take no damage. One leap also means we take no damage. Now, like, frost orbs probably mean we take no damage, but it's just a very, very slow fight here to finish this off. But I don't see any reason that we should be, you know, particularly alarmed. Like, you know, if you look at this run, take a one on this turn, but if you look at this run relative to, um, you know, runs we have that have won, I don't necessarily see in this run, like, the seeds of a doomed fate. Centennial Puzzle. Could be okay. So I'm gonna... Hear me out here. I'm gonna take Hyper Beam, because I, I don't think our orbs are necessarily that important for us. Obviously, this isn't really what I want to get out of this, but... Um, he's for 12, I think? 11. Um, certainly, we want to play that. This is another 10 damage. Gotcha. Um, what I want to do is get a core surge. I'm going to keep it real thin for now. Um, but what I want to do is get a core surge. Fire is okay. And if I get a core surge, then I just want to play core surge hyper beam or panacea hyper beam. And we'll find ourselves. Ooh, that's a painful turn. Uh, in, like, a really, really good spot. You're lucky you're not dead. Um, because we'll get the 25 damage, but we won't lose the focus that normally is necessary to make it happen. But, I mean, it's a rare card, so you gotta hope for the best. Well, all... I think... I'd go so far as to say, and not everybody's gonna agree with me on this one. By the way, don't do this. It worked, sort of, but don't do it. Not everyone's gonna agree with me on this one, but I kinda think, like... If you're gonna be the defect, you gotta try to get a self-repair. That's my experience, at least. So we're just gonna try to survive until Hyper Beam comes back. Here's the thing. We're gonna play this on turn one. I don't know what he hits for. We got hit for nine. Then what do we do on the next turn? Pop this bad boy. We're gonna hit you. We're gonna leap. We're gonna strike as well. Zap's not good enough. No, we need Zap out there to get a dual cast. Okay, we put up 24. Oh, thank God. 
So we basically just bet on us drawing enough to kill him before it was too late. Double upgraded defense. It's only okay, in my opinion. In our shop. I don't see a core surge. Um, is there value in a 7 damage dramatic entrance right off the bat? Maybe. I kind of like the idea of hologram, and I, I always do. But I like the idea of a hologram because it gives me the ability to very quickly do like hyper beam, hologram, hyper beam. Just get that out there because we can. Get it out of our deck. You know, why not? So we'll probably stall when it comes to hyper beams here. And I think I'm willing to take the damage on turn one, but uh, or turn two, I guess. But I'm willing to stall when it comes to the hyper beams here. He's doing 16 damage, so just be smart when you think about the way you approach this. So we're set. We can actually hit him one more time. Good. Uh, because I don't want to lose focus yet. Uh, like, I think we've got this run in a very good spot. He's doing 20 damage. So we're going to let him hit us for 8, unfortunately. But in the meantime, you know, we get to keep our orbs out there doing a lot of damage. Once we get a little closer to the end, that's where we're going to start to look at a hyper beam. As a, a bit more of a, a prudent choice for us. But, you know, admittedly, this situation, it, it's messed up. <laughs> It does require us to be relatively smart in the way we approach this. We definitely could have done another attack there. We're taking no damage if we hit him once. You know he's doing 20. So now we're taking zero, but it's an unpleasant zero. I still... If you don't have to, I think, I mean, because he puts up a block next, I think. If you don't have to, I think you don't hyper beam him. And you definitely, as of this point, still do not have to. Like, if we play, hyper beam is the only way we can lose, if that makes sense. Now, is it worth playing? Almost certainly. I'm just trying to think. If I hit you again, I go down to 8, then I go up to 12, so we should be good. Um... Like, we've got the run under control right now. 15. So we're actually at 19. I can hit you one more time. Hyper Beam will kill him, but it's also the only way that I could see us losing this run. That was a good fight. We handled that very properly. Okay. I think with four energy, we can make Echo Form work. Absolutely. And then... I don't know, man. Don't really see it like this. Uh, so our win condition... I mean, it's it's like Core Surge, which we don't even have yet. I think I'm gonna... I'm gonna go Tiny House. As embarrassing as it is. Upgraded Leap, sure. <sighs> rebound, like Rebound Upgraded Hologram. Hyper Beam. You know, there's combos there that we can roll. But we really... I think we want to hit these shops for the best chance possible to buy Core Surge. Because it is so useful. Echo Form going out there, like, immediately is going to be very painful. But we can make up for that pain later by playing an Echo Form Self-Repair. Remember, whatever you play first gets played twice. So we'd probably, honestly, rather just put up 16 block on the cheap. Yeah, we take no damage, but just barely. So we can kill them. As ridiculous as it might sound, I kind of don't want to. Or I don't want to kill both, at least. You're probably defending, so I'm going to hit you. Yeah, it won't kill you. Good. Now self-repair. We got it. That's incredible. Um... And we killed him. So we got back up to 67 HP. Try a ball lightning. More offensive punch. Seems valuable. Direct damage. It's an easy choice again. <laughs> um, no real point to 
using like a steroid potion, I think. Let's put up some block. And again, what do we do? Well, we wait for self-repair to come back. Not even come back, just come around. So we're going to do 27 damage to all enemies with a Hyper Beam. This guy got stronger, so I'd rather attack him. Why not? We took very little damage over the course of that fight. I still, I think like a doubled up Cold Snap, totally acceptable. Gremlin Horn for free is insanely good. They, they changed the shading on Gremlin Horn. Don't think you can sneak that by me, mister. So I would expect probably like 15 damage is the maximum here. I did not mean to play that. Um, how much damage are you doing? 14. Okay, good to know. We were close. Take another six there. It's all right. It's all in the spirit of getting a doubled self repair out there first, which is when it shows up, I think you have to play it. Okay, so we got nine block. He's just blocking, which is fantastic news. And now we really want to go for broke. Uh, and I think I would rather cold snap twice and get the extra evoke out there. And now we got nine block by default. We're also healing up to 68 HP. Pretty solid. Double steroid potion is like disgustingly good. And I gotta admit, I see the uh, I see the joy in this run now to some extent. And what I mean by that is, we I think we have a chance to get some redemption against this guy right here. So I'm gonna dramatic, cold snap, hologram, cold snap, defend. 14, that is exactly how much damage he does turn one. We're gonna rebound, FTL, zap. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold this hyper beam, just for now. Now, we have to play Echo Form. I know, you're looking at this steroid potion and you're like, please God, play it. I know, but like, simultaneously, our game plan has worked out very well for us so far. So now we've got, we, we have to. It has to be done. We are taking a lot of damage here. A hyper beam does hit him for 54. A hyper beam does... Okay. It's our moment. 49 HP. Still relatively good. I think there's some value in Sunder here. Because of the fact that, um, well, actually, if it kills an enemy, we'll get one extra energy back on top of that. Now, it's not always going to be in play, but when it is, I think we're going to be pretty happy. I didn't realize we had more elite fights in this direction. So you really want to draw Sunder turn one, is what it comes down to, but we didn't. Or rather, we won't. It's a kind of a weak self-repair play, but I'm I'm content to do it. We'd like to kill this guy last, but it is what it is, right? Because we're vulnerable, I think that was a good play. 27. Wow, we got hit for zero. That's kind of incredible. Um our turn now is very simple, but we will be hit, and probably badly. No, only... Oh, well, for 18. Okay, yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, got out of it relatively well at 47 HP. Just keep in mind, we do have to fight an elite here. We have no choice. So a, an Echo Form self-repair is real nice, if you can swing it. You know this guy's going to hit you, but I still think the Frost Orb could pay for itself long term. So we really want an Echo Form Self Repair. As soon as it shows up, <clears throat> you have to play it in my opinion. You know this guy's going to go for the debuff. 
Good. No damage. Debuffs are out. Okay, what comes next? I'd rather... Even though it left you alive, I think I'm okay with that. I mean, we could rebound asunder. But I really would like to take no damage. I think we might even need to pop that to make that happen, but... Oh, he's not even going for an attack. Straight up. We're getting there. Not that many dazes in this deck. I think we can get away with that. Just being very, very, like, overly cautious. Twenty-three. We did take three damage there. That's not that bad. Okay, we made it through. We're gonna be at forty-four. Meteor strike, huh? Kind of tempting, but don't know if we can get there. Now this is a real test. Okay, start week. I was gonna say Sunder turn one. Forty-nine damage. Are you kidding me, man? It's all right. We get a really nice bonus right there. Oh, we should have just dramatic. It's not gonna be twenty-seven damage. It's going to be like 40 damage. Basically could not ask for a better first boss or first turn on a boss fight. This is like the best fight I've ever had against those guys. Shuriken, also a great relic. I think there's certainly a case for Beam Cell, especially when you consider, you know, its potential value with Sunder. Um... A second Hyper Beam is kind of interesting, but I actually think like Apotheosis is a kind of an interesting choice here. And we are going to fight another enemy. And uh, how do I feel about it? Does that answer your question? You definitely go for it, right? You gotta, you gotta hit him early. I was hoping it wouldn't be this guy. It's a bad turn, but this is what Echo Form's here for. Um, so you probably just double up on like Cold Snap for that raw block potential. Even though it doesn't give you any extra block now that I think about it logically. Um, 12. Okay, fair. Sort of. We lived. We didn't play Self Repair. Core Surge. Enormous. Now, we do need to beat the, this boss right here with 39 HP. We should have just gone the shop path. I was like, but I don't want to take the shop path, Mom. Why wouldn't I want to take the shop path? Because I just went to a shop. No, that's pretty terrible. Um, okay, but we do have Echo Form out there turn one, which is what we wanted. So, I think... If you just get away with, like, a beam cell here. Core Surge must have protected us from something he did. Twenty-five block. What are you doing? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> hmm. It's... Admittedly, real tempting to play an Apotheosis, but also real scary to play an Apotheosis. Twenty-five? Okay, didn't get hit. You know, you, this is one of those situations where you look at it and you're like, ah, I was kind of hoping for, like, you know, some block. But I guess we're going to try here. No hits, please. Hey, just another debuff that ensures our inevitable demise later. Um, there's no reason to play in a double apotheosis, unfortunately. I think we're completely and utterly screwed. Yeah, we're going to have 9 HP. Which means we effectively just can't take damage against this guy. So we really need to output this damage, like, as fast as is humanly possible. 
He's gonna. This is his heel turn. So is this where we go for friggin' broke? He's gonna purge his debuff, so maybe don't use the poison right away. I'm just thinking, like, Hyper Beam is a lot of damage, but maybe we could just, you know, and, I, and as of the cards we've gotten right now, I feel like this was definitely the right choice um, to do it like this and keep that vulnerability up on him. And then you hit him for 49, and you basically have to kill him next turn. I don't know how we're gonna do that. I haven't really considered it, but we're, we're better than expected, honestly. I have to, like, here's the deal. Whatever we play first gets played twice. We have a great turn for defense. If I, like, hologram... Well, we're not going to bring back anything too defensive. Really, I think you defend for 8 and then reinforce body. Which is actually 16. Then you're going to reinforce body for 27. And you do that because the second reinforced body, I believe, would not be worth anything. And we lived. Now, probably not for long. Please, God. <laughs> We're still alive. You have to hit him on, like, one of these turns. Surely. 17. Okay, so you hit him with the heaviest cards. Oh, my God, we did it. Okay, so we're alive. Against all odds. Of course, like, an Amplify Echo form is kind of tempting. I mean, I don't, I don't really like any of these, to be honest with you. I think I may skip. Hmm. Five energy. It gives us a chance on turns where we're playing Echo form. Um, so for sure, I thought I was dead. We definitely stick left path for the easy elite corridor. Turn one, we'd like to put up like 20 block if possible. Um, not possible, by the way. We did almost kill him. We put up 12 block. Actually, we, he only hit us for 11. That's amazing. So, early, if possible, we want to self-repair. But just to survive the fight is pretty okay. There is something to be said about, like, a streamline plus a hologram. Especially when we have 5 energy to begin with. So, I think we try that. Um... Let's apotheosis early. We did that very wrong, Lee. Because we do want... Uh... That's okay. Oh, that's less than okay, but life goes on. Uh, I mean, you just hyper beam. And you're hoping to get a self-repair. Not necessary, I guess. Uh, we'll take a second self-repair for sure. I, I understand boot sequence as well for zero. If we get another chance at that, we might want to do it, but, um... Start here. At least put up, like, some block and then hit them all. You get a gremlin horn out of it. With a lightning and the sunder, sunder, lightning and the sunder. Anyway, I don't like Imagine Dragons, but I can appreciate a joke when it arrives. We did take a little damage to get it done, but we also killed a thorny boy for the cost of 1 HP, which is 0 HP in my world. For now, at least. Dude. Call me crazy. You're crazy. But I think we got a real chance of making this run happen. What do you think? You, I think you'd ice him. And just accept that you're still healing for 14 after. Um, take another leap. Madness. We want madness. To a huge degree. A lot of our cards are very expensive. All I'm saying is I think we've, we've got a genuine opportunity at having a chance to succeed. Please God, no big attacks. Ah, seven damage. No big deal. Okay. So, Core Surge is extremely nice. How bad do you think they're going to hit? I think this will protect us. Nope. We only took four, though, which is pretty, you know, relatively okay. You have to. This is going to hurt. 
quite a lot. Uh, only 15. I know that it seemed like only, pardon me, only 15, but I mean now we heal for 27 at the end of combat, so... I do hate that they continue to get stronger. But, you know, that solves that problem. We're back to 53 HP. Not that bad. I don't really want to thicken this deck. Certainly, I think a rest is in order. And then, these are probably my favorite elites to fight. Just for simplicity's sake. Not a great first couple of turn, or first turn I should say, but if, you know, you get a Sunder or something like that. Start to think about making sure this guy's dead as heck. Core Surge, also amazing. I just, I don't think you want to play Ball Lightning if you're on a turn where maybe you could just kill him. He's going to be at 24, which is actually 19. 25, which is actually 20, okay. It's alright, we still got him, so we'll get this Gremlin Horn play. FTL just ticks up your strength, which is okay. I think you just accept a little... Oh, we should have played the dual cast to block. Yeah, it would have blocked. We would have taken no damage. Um, Madness did not hit Sunder. Life goes on. I still... You know what? Don't play that yet. No, you have to. It's a way overkill on block. But I, st I do think you have to. Just to make sure that you're, you know, safe long term. You know, f healing for 14 and being at 71 HP would be totally fine. Like, why would we be sad about that? That's a really good situation. Mummified Hand. Also extremely good. Chaos for one, I will accept. Dude, there is a real opportunity for this run to work here. And it is absurd to me, because we've had to play with no enemy intents for the entire game. Lantern's really nice. I hope we hit a shop, because it could kill us. <laughs> uh, the pain, that is, could kill us. We don't play too many powers, so I'm not too worried about the Awakened one. But I'm, I'm very concerned about getting there. Wow, we took exactly zero. Um, but life, you know, is probably going to be pretty painful from this point onwards. Seven damage. That hurts. You know, very good economy for us on this one, though. Look, I mean, we were able to kill all three of the basic enemies there. Put up 24 block. You know, you have to consider that's probably 26 block. It wasn't quite enough, but it, it was very close, I think. So let's start with Apotheosis, you know, relatively cheap here. Um, geez, man, this is a terrible turn because of pain. I guess we just get rid of it. He says, pretending that he knew that that was going to be the play. <laughs> Definitely did not forget that I had Blue Candle, if that's what you're wondering. Have to. Ah, uh, we did that very incorrectly. But we can still take advantage of it like so. 11 block. We could be hit depending on what you do. Okay, you're just summoning still. So you always want to self-repair. And that's very unfortunate. We're about to take a nasty hit to the face. But we are going to heal... Oh, you healed yourself. I don't think this fight's ever gone on that long. Anyway, you're all dead. But we are going to heal for 27 after this, which means we're above full HP. Now that I know pain is actually just 1 HP loss whenever you draw it, it's not nearly as bad. Lovely. I prefer the debuff turn 1, if we have to. Twenty block could be worse. I think you definitely just play your hand here. Sixteen block, okay, he's buffing. That's fair. Have to play the echo form. Makes defend free. Love it. Hologram. 
preferably decent defend. 12 block, we're gonna get hit. Yeah, we got hit for 21. Pretty bad. But, now here, self-repair. Now we got 14 up. We got two cards that are extremely cheap. Or free, for that matter. 40 blocks should be enough, no matter what he does. Yeah. Okay, what do you double up on? Honestly, I like a doubled up leap, just to keep us safe. Again, you'd expect 35 block, pretty good. And then if you hyper beam him, he's dead. Or you could just double up on pain for no reason and, and do things the hard way. That's why I, you know, I have a lot of respect for myself to do things the way that is substantially more difficult for no reason. Um, I, I do think that like long-term force field is totally fine once we get our powers out there. Both of these are not that good. Give me two potions. Substantially better. As long as we stall on playing Hyper Beam, these are substantially better. Well, you definitely want to play those. We took out 59 damage turn one. Beam Cell is unbelievably important. 78 damage turn two. Just gotta. We have no idea how much damage he's doing, so you gotta, you gotta give it to him pretty good. This turn is gonna be real not good. We're gonna to to take like 30 damage. 37, yep, okay. Um, you don't have to play Echo Form. You don't. Not anymore, anyway. Hello, Ruka. Forty-two damage. It was 40, 48 damage. I don't know. He might get hit for like six. Yeah. It's not too bad. We're gonna live. <laughs> We're not built to fight that guy. I think you dump the strength potion, you keep that focus potion for now, and the charge battery's fine. Okay. Good rest, please. 67. Alright. Here we go. Okay. Love it. Have to take it. That's a pretty good get for us. We still have five energy. So we get 28 block turn one. Very, very good. No damage taken. Next step. We can play a hyper beam here. Apotheosis makes hologram not exhaust. So I love that already. That's a kill. Okay. You still, you, I think madnessing something is totally fine. I love this because we get to keep playing cards. The more cards we play, the more strength we get, the more block we get, etc., etc. I haven't even played a power yet. We're at 41 block, should be fine. You know we have to play Echo Form when it shows up. What we don't have to do is play uh, our self repairs. Unless we find it important to do so, which there may be, we, you know, conceivably there might come a point where we want to just exhaust them from our deck. You have to play Echo Form. Not even negotiable. I'm just, I don't want to lose my orbs this early, especially with this level of focus. Because of Echo Form, sorry, because of Artifact from Core Surge, we can absolutely play Hyper Beam, but I don't want to play it first. I want to play it second so we get the 50 whatever damage, 60 whatever damage bonus without losing two focus, you know? Three, three focus, I should say. We'll just get the one damage done first. I, I genuinely believe in the power of this to, to do good for us. So we'll start with the Streamline. Should have played the Defend. It would have made Hyper Beam better forever, but... Okay, so now, we keep our focus. We did a bunch of damage. It's good stuff. We are going to get hit. Ooh, we're very low, actually. Um, well, let's start by smacking him good. We got Plasma. Normally the best orb. Maybe not that useful here. 
Didn't take any damage on that turn, which is nice. Um, again, I mean, obviously you could Hyper Beam him, but we don't really have to. It'll be close. One bad turn could kill us. And that's why I think you've got to be smart and you got to be like, okay, out of all of these, what would we like to do? Straight up, you might just like to double a defend. A lot of plasma out there. So we put up 31 block. We still got hit for 12. So we got to be very vigilant about our defense in case you did you disbelieved me early. Still only have 24 block. We are 9 HP. That's tough, man. That's real tough. I don't think we're going to take damage. I think we can afford to do something defensive. And we can... Probably afford to hyper beam you. Because our focus is somewhat irrelevant now. It's four extra block plus the strength upgrade. We got the 47. Not even close. Alright. Um, you'd certainly double up on that leap there. This could easily kill us. We're on 35. Oh my god, we lived. Okay. <laughs> um, we have to go for the kill. The best way to do it is definitely this. Holy crap, we did it. Oh my god. We won. We won a run with Runic Dome 100% of the time. That is absurd. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Follow me on Twitch for all that live content goodness. Twitch.tv slash Northern Lion. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hoo <laughs> hoo